Well, I think Northwestern is a little unusual for a secular college or university. You know, some similar schools might think that secular means no place for religious identity or expression of faith. And Northwestern, we just define secular in the proper way, I think, which is that we don't privilege one faith over any other, but we welcome all faiths. And that's one of the really nice things about Northwestern. It's whether it's the you know, the Muslims or the Catholics or the Protestants or the Jews that we really have uh, spaces where they can really uh, not only feel comfortable and explore their faith, in some cases question it, but also in some cases actually enhance it, which almost never happens, I find, at a secular university. But the other thing we do a lot of is there are so many people who identify with religion at Northwestern that there's a lot of interfaith. And, um, it seems like there's constant dialogue and there are two good things about interfaith. One, one is that you get to uh, learn about other people and associate with other people. The other one is it, it, it causes most people to learn more about their own faith. Because you can't really do interfaith unless you sort of know something about the, the faith you're already in. And I think we do a really good job of both and Hillel is absolutely at the, at the forefront of it. I think there are some wonderful things about Hillel, especially ours. I mean, one is that it's a much more inclusive community than some. You know, we don't really do the litmus test. Are you sure you're Jewish or you're not? And, and we certainly don't do, or, oh, you have to be reformed or conservative versus orthodox or orthodox versus conservative or reformed. So I, I think that part of the magic of, of Hillel is it's like a friendly, welcoming community. And, I, you know, I, some students go there because you know, the, the ritual aspects of Judaism are very attractive to them, and some it's more the social, and some is more a learning experience, but I think, you know, it's a place where you can feel that it's part of your home. Uh, I mean, it's two important um, anniversaries. You know, one is that creating a place that really nurtures Jewish life, and the second one, getting rid of the quota finally was a way to make sure that, uh, you know, talented students who happened to be Jewish, you know, weren't disadvantaged in an admissions process. So I think we probably did a pretty good job taking care of Jewish Jews who got in, say if you're talking about undergrads, because of the presence of Hillel for 30 years. But it wasn't until the quota ended that we got the kind of numbers that we, we see today. Um, I, you know, I spend time there when they have me over. I, think I, I judge Purim contests and that kind of stuff, you know, costume contests for Purim. Yeah, the winner at Purim, that costume thing wasn't Haman or somebody else or Esther. I mean, it was, it was somebody dressed up, purportedly to look like, like I do, but much better looking than I am. And it was, it was really funny with the purple sweater and the tie and the hair. You know, we, we, he had like chalk dust in there or something to make it great. It was really wonderful. So I had to choose the guy. He looked, uh, <laughs> he looked so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we belonged to a conservative synagogue when I grew up in, in New Jersey, Union, New Jersey. My father was uh, very active in the synagogue. He was head of the men's club for a little while. He was president. So, um, and I actually worked there. I, I uh, like, I had a after school job. And I went over to the synagogue, which was very close to where my high school was. And, you know, I broke down chairs, set up chairs, you know, so they arranged tables for, you know, um, you know for you know, Sunday morning men's club breakfast and all that. So I, was, I, I worked at the synagogue for a number of years. I went to the Hebrew high school. Yeah, it was a very important part of my life. So it's a very good question, one that I think about a lot. And, you know, some people said, well, you know, the kind of certain values aren't unique to Judaism. You know, healing the world is a tikkun alone is wonderful, but it's not probably not completely unique to Judaism. And you know, compassion and empathy, and, you know, public service, community service, and the like is not specific. But you know, we have a faith that really privileges those kinds of values. Certainly, I, I think that I couldn't imagine the counterfactual, what I would be like as a president, what I would be like as a faculty member, what would I be like as a person, without you know, the fact that I was born as a Jew. So it's 
so strong a part of me, I, I can't even separate my identity from my Judaism. My, my identity is based on my Judaism. Uh, I, I live for Pesach, you know, I, I mean, I, I manage to suck it up and get through Thanksgiving and a number of these other, Fourth of July and something like that, and I don't really, you know, but uh, Pesach is our big family holiday, and um, we do, uh, you know, Seder each night, obviously, the first, you know, the two Seders, and we tend to have about 65 people at the, the President's house for each one. We, we started that uh, when I was President of Williams, so we've been doing that. I've been president for 14 years, but probably maybe all 14 years we've been doing seniors with faculty and staff and friends, townspeople, and a lot of students. And um, my daughter is 25, really leads it, although I play a role as well. And then my son is 27, typically plays some role, and my 14-year-old does as well. So, um, you know, we just live for Pesach. It's my favorite role. You know, for me, I, I, you know, I couldn't live my life without Shabbat, you know, without, without taking the time to be in synagogue. Um, you know, it gives me the energy for the rest of the week. It really does. Uh, you know, Senator Joe Lieberman was once asked, uh, you know, how does he observe Shabbat? He's so busy. And he had a great answer. You know, he said, the reason I'm so busy is because of Shabbat it gives me the energy, and I feel exactly the same way. So when things go well, I know Shabbat's coming up to thank God for it, and when things go poorly, I know Shabbat's coming up to uh, give me some inspiration and some solitude. So, you know, I always say, no matter how good or bad things are, especially bad, Shabbat's only six days away. Right? So the end of Saturday night after Abdallah, we just got to suck it up and wait six days, and it's Friday night coming up again. Well, if a student here wants to learn more about his or her Judaism or get involved religiously, I mean, we're blessed to have this beautiful building, perfectly located, with great people in there who are very nurturing and welcoming to anybody. So I always say, uh, go over to Hillel, it could change your life. Well, 80 years is a major milestone and deserves to be celebrated. And I think it's really wonderful that Hillel's been here as such a important part of our community for such a long period of time and you know, I, th I think their role is going to be strengthened over time. I really do. I think the importance um, of religious understanding and religious uh, instruction and engagement is more important for this generation than it was for previous generations and I think that's going to continue. I think that you know with social media, the decline of civility and all the problems out there that I think that religion is more of a haven for understanding and uh, satisfaction. And it's, it's more needed now than it was and I, I think Hillel at Northwestern is going to be here forever as long as the university is and I think it's going to play an even greater role than it, than it had in the past. I think it's playing a great role now but I think it's going to be enhanced. I think it's needed more. Well, to say go cats, since cats, K-A-T-Z, is a very Jewish name, so, so whenever I say go cats, C-A-T-S, I'm thinking of both go cats. <laughs>